Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm getting into a few luxury random purchases. I haven't been doing as much makeup shopping since the so spring Sephora sale. Um, I have quite a few videos about that. And then since then I've just kind of been randomly picking stuff up, but really not a lot actually only really have a couple makeup products to talk about today. Um, otherwise, I know there is, there has been a lot of new makeup releases that I either haven't been interested in or I just haven't really had the time to research, like what do I want to pick up to do a video. Um, I have to say, you guys have probably noticed, um, YouTube has not been a top priority <laughs> for me recently. Um, I just been swamped at work and when I do have time on the weekend I want to enjoy myself with friends and go outside and get sort of back to normal post pandemic um so I haven't been like oh yeah I want to spend more hours in front of a computer editing I do have a couple of videos to edit but they're longer and I just rather do other things with my time <laughs> unfortunately for you guys. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to do my best. Um, but I did want to sort of film some new things that I picked up. These are all new to me. These are one of these products is brand new, but otherwise everything else just new to me. Um, and let's jump in. So I have a couple of makeup products. I'll start with that. So the new thing I picked up is the Sonia G Sheer Buffer Brush. And this has been used. I just was excited to start using it so I didn't like take pictures of it clean. Um, this does have some product in it, but you can see there's some wispies coming at the top here and then like more of a dense right underneath, dense layer. Um, this is supposed to be for cream blending of products, foundations, cream blushes. I have Sonia G's Fusion series that I've been using to sort of apply and blend foundation. But you can see this is much denser and I was very tempted by the fact that I could, you know, blend out cream blushes and things, liquid blushes a little bit better. So I picked this up. This is very new to me, but I only used it like once, twice. Um, so I want to try this out with you guys at the end of the video, show what it does with foundation, with cream, liquidy products to see what it does. Because I did find that depending on the product, the cream or liquid blush, it, it kind of blended too much with some things and made it disappear. So I thought, well, maybe this isn't right for all cream products. So that's why I picked this up and very excited. Um, I got it off Beautylish. This is the exclusive retailer of Sonia G. Not sponsored, obviously none of my videos are. Um, but uh, I realized I had a credit that is expiring after I bought this that I could have used this on. I had a like $15 credit. So then I picked, <laughs> I made another order because I didn't want to lose out on my $15 at Beautylish. So I got the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I heard a lot of good things about it. And I know quickly I'm gonna be out of the current setting spray. I'm using the Milk Hydro, which I've been really liking. This I tried once and I like the light mist. It does smell. Um, but I thought I would try it out today, go outside, take a walk with my makeup on and see what this does. Um, so those are the makeup products I picked out. Obviously not new, but you probably have been curious about this giant bottle of this is 100 mils 3.3 fluid ounces of setting spray it's big um and then this brush i believe maybe it was 65 dollars anyway um i also got some hair care products for basically the cost of shipping and handling if you guys aren't subscribed to, what is it? I forget the company, but you basically subscribe through text and they do free gift Fridays. And I have it on my phone that I'm filming on. Um, and so if you get a text, you'll get a link. 
and it will tell you what the gift is and they only have so many and you have to like really act fast if you want to pick something up and I've gotten several things actually through that free gift Friday um, so you're gonna pay probably around $12, $13 for shipping but that's it well you'll get the most value out of the products that are like over $100 right there are some products that are like $50, $60, but you generally get to try them. There's no commitment to review or anything, and it's awesome. So I got some things from Davines, the hair care brand that I've always wanted to try. Um, I think they asked me like what color my hair is. They did a little survey, and then they, they this was like kind of a, a targeted free gift Friday for me for blonde hair. So this is the Davini's Heart of Glass. I got both of these, which was awesome. The Intensive Treatment and the Sheer Glaze. So I've tried these a couple times. The Heart of Glass is to me a mask, but it's a it's an interesting texture. It's almost like a, I don't know, a glossing mask. It feels very nourishing. I really like it. I wish there was more product in here. This is only 150 milliliters, 5.25 ounces, very small for a mask. So, you know, I'm glad I didn't pay full price for it. But this is the texture of the mask. It's kind of a gel-like mask. I, I don't really actually like the scent of this. This is kind of a baby powder floral. Not a huge fan. It's, it's kind of a strong soapy smell too. Uh, but I'll show you the texture really quick. I did really like this in my hair and now my hair's dry, you know, pretty damaged, but this felt really good in my hair. I felt like it was really doing something. So I may continue to use it. I, I do kind of recommend trying out this brand in general. A lot of salons carry it. If you get the chance to try it, they have a lot of ranges. I enjoy the brand. I also, so this is the, the leave in, I don't know. Brightening thermal fluid for blondes. This is a thermal protector, so you put it in before you blow dry or heat style your hair. Um, this is interesting. I feel like I have to put like 20 pumps to get anything out of here. It's very um, milky liquidy. This is how much comes out. So you gotta pump it a lot. This is 150 mils, five ounces. It looks small, but for like high-end hair care. Not outrageous for leave-in product size, but it has this really thin gel, milky texture, similar scent to this Heart of Glass range, all has the same scent. I don't love it. Um, I've been using it, I'm not sure. So I already use like leave-in, a lot of leave-in products, protection products for heat styling, I use leave-in toning products because my hair can, I mean, it is yellow, but it can get really bright, brassy. Um, so I have been using it pretty much since I've got it. Every time I wash my hair, I'll put leave it in. I do think it makes the hair soft. I do notice that. Um, again, I don't think it's so extraordinary that I would go out and repurchase. Um, but I have been enjoying it. So I think it's, it's nice and lightweight for those of you that have, you know, a thinner texture hair, don't have a lot of hair. I think you will like that type of leave-in. Um, for me, I like a thick globby cream for my hair. I like a little bit of weight. Um, so for me, it's okay. I, I kind of find the applicator the most annoying part about it and the scent is pretty strong. Um, but those two things I got for just, I think, like $12.95 shipping and handling, which is, you can't beat that. All right, I picked up some things, I think, from Bergdorf Goodman was having a beauty sale. Um, and I haven't been able to find this particular body wash in a while. And this body wash really got me addicted to buying perfumed body washes. I love the scent. This is, and I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't even think you can get this off the Frederick Mall website. Last time I looked, um, this is the En Passant body wash. It is from Frederick Mall and the perfumer is Olivia Gia Cobetti. 
And I honestly, so I got this and a little 10 milliliter version, a 10 milliliter perfume version of En Passant, okay? So they, they generally have the body wash version of fragrances. Not, not every fragrance does have a body wash though, I will say that. So when I saw this green guy, I was like, ooh, I'm gonna pick that up. Because this is intense, it's beautiful, it, it literally takes me away when I shower to another place. Um, so I was like, I gotta get it, even though I have a bunch of perfume body washes right now. I have so many like ready to be used, so I couldn't miss the opportunity. Also, these are so expensive, I wanted to get it on sale. So, you know, bonus points all around. I will say now that I have the perfume, I, I, have, I think I've tried the perfume before. And now that I have like the legitimate non-travel size version, I love the body wash version of In Passant more than the perfume. I think it smells better. I think it's more intense. I'm not gonna open it for you. I've This is my second purchase of it. I think the body wash is fine. It's a, just a normal gel texture. It doesn't do anything special really. It's all about the scent. For me, I love the scent of this. If you haven't tried it, if you're like into perfume body washes and you love a green floral, you're gonna love this. So I, let's see if they have the notes on here. I don't know, they describe it as a, transports you to a flowering garden where spring breeze catches a white lilac bouquet. Paired down scent of flowers over a handful of orange leaves, wheat and cucumber. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's perfection in a bottle. Love the scent. But the perfume on the other hand, I think it's just, it's okay. It's, whoops. It's not, you know, the end all be all. I know you guys don't like it when I spray my skin, but a lot of people spray perfume on their skin. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a giant spider on my window. I mean, it is the same scent. I feel like certain notes stand out differently in the body wash version, which I prefer. But this one is nice as, t you know, it's a nice perfume. It's just not as like, Oh my God, amazing. So if you guys aren't familiar with Frederick Mall, they have a lot of different options. It's like a perfume conglomerate with where they highlight certain perfumers and certain perfumers make certain things. And so they always highlight the name. So it's all Frederick Mall, but really they highlight the perfumer who makes the scent for Frederick Mall. Does that make sense? Their most well-known fragrance is Portrait of a Lady which I have, I do not wear it often because it is a very sophisticated, I won't say older person scent, but to me, I have to be in a certain mood and it, to me, it's a more of a nighttime, dark, smoky fragrance, um, but it is very much a rose fragrance and beautiful. They have so many different other things though, so don't think the brand is just that. Um, they have a lot of men's and women's, it, it, I think this particular one is very much a garden, fresh, clean scent. Probably more women will like it, but I mean, it's a body wash. You're in the shower. Who cares? I think it's gorgeous. Um, so that is what I picked up from the Bergdorf Goodman sale. I think that's where I got it from. There's been a lot of sales lately this summer, which I'm loving. I also wanted to quickly mention, I got a bunch of samples from Lucky Scent. So Lucky Scent, if you don't follow them on Instagram, they are a huge, I wanna say educational perfume resource. They always have videos and sometimes they're just like the new releases of the month at their stores or they are like themed videos. Like here, we're doing a video of like our favorites from, you know, the staff pick favorites, what they're loving now. Or they'll focus like, here's our favorite almond scents. Um, and so I really enjoy watching those videos and sometimes I get inspired to like try things and pick things up based on how much they love something. 
Um, they have some really knowledgeable and entertaining staff to watch that makes those videos. So check out Lucky Scent. I'm not sponsored. I just really enjoy their stuff. Um, and their online website has so much to choose from. They really have a lot available. Um, and I actually have an order with them that I'm not sure when it's going to ship. So it would ship in June and it's past that. Um, but I picked a bunch of, bunch of samples based on watching one of their recent videos of like new releases, new favorites. And so I have this whole bag of things I picked up. These do add up. I, I love samples, but I really, it's cheaper than me just going out and buying a bottle without ever smelling it. So, um, I picked up a I'm not gonna go through each one because there's some random stuff in here that I, I didn't really like. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the few that it, that stood out to me. Uh, and I wanted to mention Acro Bake. Um, I do like Acro as a brand and they have a new perfume called Cake. And I'm gonna redo the scent on here. It is a, a lemony cake sweet scent. Um, I'm actually surprised they didn't do sort of like a more gourmand food addiction scent in their like original release of all their fragrances. Mm, this really does smell like food and I think it's based on a actual bakery. I So I just, when I use spray it, it smells exactly like a lemon cake or pastry. I think it, it comes from a very... It's supposed to be a, a duplicate or a replication of a very specific food item from a bakery. But once it dries down, it actually stops being as like gourmand and food scented. It becomes something, you know, still sweet, but a little bit more wearable, I suppose. Because me personally, I don't want to smell like cake. I mean, I love vanilla, but... I'm not like a super fan of vanilla or like very sweet things. I like something a little bit more interesting than just straight up cake, but this is very lovely. I think it's probably, I don't know, if you like sweet scents, anybody can wear it, but I feel like um, more women are going to want to wear like a cupcake kind of a scent. But this is really nice. It's got some, you know, earthier tones under there once it dries down, which kind of surprises me. I haven't really smelled it that much since it dries down. But Acro Bake, an interesting. If you like lemon desserts, you might really love this. I personally won't be picking it up. Um, so out of all these um, scents here, I just wanted to mention a couple. Um, and I am waiting on a full size of one of these. The ones that stood out to me are the Caswell Massey Almond. So Caswell Ma Mass Massey um, has a lot of different scents and I believe this is one of the most popular ones, the Almond. I don't think I've, I've smelled a straight up almond scent like this before. Mmm, it's, it's almost coconut almond, like Almond Joy or Mounds. That is very interesting. I think it's nice. It's kind of a milky almond scent. Um, to me, it's a little bit, I don't know if boring is the right word, but it, it's, it's simple. It's clean. It's good. If you love almond, I think you'll like it. But for me, it's not so amazing that I want to pick it up. Another interesting one is from Giard... Giardini di Toscana Bora Bora. This one, if I didn't love the other one so much, I would probably pick up a full bottle of this, maybe in the future. The only thing that holds me back is like, not that it's a basic smell, but it's a smell that everyone smelled before, but this is just a very nice version of it. So Bora Bora is the one that I, I like. It's a very summery tropical scent and it's just it's coconut but it's so well done and clean and beautiful and it does remind me of you know a lot of low-end popular products smell like this but this is like an elevated very nice version of it so it's just not so unique 
that I'm like, oh, I have to have this right now. But it is very much beautiful suntan lotion, summertime, coconutty, tropical. That is just exquisite. So I do like Bora Bora quite a bit. But the one that I am picking up full-size bottle of, I had no idea this one was popular. I actually never heard of it before, before I saw the Lucky Scent Instagram post. This is Stephane Humbert Lucas. Got a fire. Now, I don't even, a lot of times I don't really know what I'm smelling, to be honest, but apparently this is a super fruity mango scent, and once you realize, oh yes, this is mango, you're like, oh yeah, I get it, that's why I like it. It's pretty intense. To me, it's almost like fruity, but also a lot of like sexiness to it, and smokiness, and Smokiness is not the right word, like sharpness. I don't know, it's like sickly, it's strongly fruity, but also, I don't know how to describe it. It's, a, it's an intense fruit. It almost takes it to a another level, like very strong. This is a strong scent. And I like that. I like that it's strong, it's fruity. And I love the bottle, it's blue, it's got this pointed top. I love that, I thought it was unique. It was definitely stood out among all the others. So I am waiting for that to be, I think it's on back order. So who knows when I'll actually get it, but I will do a separate video on that one. Anyways, I got a whole bunch of other things as well, um, including the one that did the almond scent, Castle Massey, I got, I think, two others, Marum, which was nice. I wasn't, like, overwhelmed in love um, with that one. But, you know, there was a lot to choose from from that brand. I will say the samples, they don't come in sprays. They come with, like, the little stick, which is not my favorite. But I think it's cheaper for them to have these bottles than the spray ones and I like doing the testers. If you're into samples, get some testers from Amazon. That way you're not, you know, putting this on your skin over and over and over. It's, it's not super great for your skin, all that alcohol. So I, I like the testers. I put the names on there so I can go back to it. Um, and you can always, you know, like re-up the scent on those testers. Um, I think it's good to go back to a fragrance multiple times to see like, okay, do I like this? Do I want to pick it up? Wear it, obviously. Does it wear well on you? Can't speak highly enough about samples. Speaking of samples, I picked up some clothes from Anine Bing. This is the same card over and over again, but I wanted to talk to you about Pure Noir and Rosewood. Pure Noir, that is kind of a nighttime, sexy, smoky, somewhat masculine scent. And then we have Rosewood, which to me is very clean, rose, and also very boring. I think these scents are not spectacular, <laughs> but I got some sample cards. Okay, so I'm going to get into demonstrating this brush with the number one De Chanel foundation. I have the shade BR12. This has been a really good foundation for me lately. I know a lot of people love this one. I, myself included, I've been liking it for a long time now and I have been using it quite a bit. So I'm going to use this brush on half of my face and then this is the the new sheer buffer and I'm going to be using the classic base which is a fusion brush from Sonia G synthetic and goat hair um, the sheer buffer I also think let me see is this a mixture of brush types as well let me double check this is an innovative handcraft stippling and buffer brush designed to apply, diffuse, and blend cream products for sheer buildable finish without disrupting anything underneath. That sounds like a dream, right? So it does have synthetic fibers and natural. So just like the Fusion series, it has a mixture of 
brush, bristle types, synthetic and natural bristle, Sokoho, Sokoho goat. Okay, yeah, $65. All right, so we're gonna try out these for foundation. And I'm gonna also gonna show you like what, what the deal is when I blend out other types of products on top. So I have some e.l.f. Halo Glow things. The last time I, I used this liquid blush, it disappeared. And I think I used this type of brush. So I'm hoping this is better. Not that I love this product, but I just thought it, maybe my brush was the issue. So I have on primer on my face. I have the Tom Ford, what is this, Traceless Matte. Traceless Soft Matte Primer. I've been loving it. And I'm gonna be using this foundation. And then at the end, I will sh I will show you what the spreading setting spray can do. So putting a few pumps on my palette here. How do I wanna apply this? I'll probably swipe on with my finger and then buff out with these. Or maybe I'll use this to apply. So this is my Lisa Eldridge synthetic foundation brush here and I'll, I'll just apply with this rather than my fingers. I think it's just a cleaner approach to just getting the product on the face than my hands. I also just don't like touching foundation if I don't have to. Okay, so I have product painted on. I'm gonna start out with the sheer buffer on this side. That's what it's called, right? Yep, Sheer Buffer. Love the simple names of Sonia G. So I don't think this is necessarily like a liquid foundation brush, but I just wanted to see like, what can it do as far as like getting the foundation to, you know, lay down on the skin? Like what can it do for my complexion? I mostly bought it to blend out the color cream products that would go on top of a foundation or even like a contour blend. I'd be curious about. I just wanted to see what this can do with regular foundation. So I'm starting there. I mean, this foundation is pretty great on its own, no matter what you use, but that looks pretty dang good. I feel like I didn't have to put a lot of work into that. I'm gonna use the classic, I cannot remember, base and blend out this side. Now this, it's denser. I feel like it, it's sometimes, I don't know what it is about this brush, but I often wanna really do, it just, almost creates a sandpaper exfoliating effect because it's so dense. I feel like it, it can make foundations sometimes not look as good depending on the formula, but I do think it probably does a, a better job of getting that foundation like into your skin and actually like very blending as well as it can. As far as the, the soft effect, I think while this might be butter into the skin, it doesn't look as good on the skin. I think this side does more of a diffused blend. Whereas this, like my nose, doesn't look so good. So I'm noticing some differences there. Let me put a little bit more product on the nose. See if that helps and I'm getting a lot of blemishes on my forehead lately. I don't know if it's the changing weather or what is happening. You know, same brand, same mixed texture of bristles, but the density of the brush is causing it a big difference in how that foundation looks. So, you know, it, it's all about technique, tools, how you use it. So I would say this looks better with this foundation by a long shot. Wow. I mean, you probably can't tell that well on camera, but this looks more textured and the foundation is just settling into the pores. 
quite a bit where this it just didn't do that on the side very interesting okay okay so maybe I can I don't know if I can save it let me apply more this is a lot of foundation Oop, my light is dying let's see if this brush can save this side All right, so I'm going to be using some definitely more sheer buildable products. So I have a contour and a blush here from e.l.f. These are newish, the Halo Glows. I'm sure there's a lot of reviews on these in, in the internet. I did a dedicated video to these and the highlighter. These are supposed to be sort of dupes to the Charlotte Tilbury versions of these. Um, I do, and I am curious because they, the contour is definitely more pigmented, but the blush I have the most trouble with. These are these sponge tip, very messy applicator type of products. I have the fair light contour shade here. And I just want to see if this sort of blends out with this brush without making it disappear. I think I need to maybe squeeze out. Ooh, this looks like it was open. You can see how gray toned that is definitely like a contour shade. I have a lot of product on there. Oh boy. This is so messy. I'm trying to shut it. I, I probably just should get rid of these, but I kept them around just a little bit longer. Oh, this is awful. I don't even know if it, I can close this. Okay, so but on my face, now I'm going to use this and see what it can do. I mean, it, it, it's very subtle still. I feel like this brush helps blend it out. But it still kind of disappeared, like you can barely see it. So maybe it's just the product. I'm going to try the blush and then probably use some other products instead, just to, so you can actually see. Um, this is the candlelit blush, by the way, it's kind of a peachy pink. Okay. It's very shiny and shimmery and sheer. And I think it's almost like a blush highlighter. This brush is kind of big for the cheek area, but let's see. Hmm. I definitely have a sheen on my face now. And definitely not a lot of color. I do think it the brush kind of helps like get into the skin, but I, I can't really see much color besides a little bit of a glow. So that's why I, I didn't really like these products. I thought the highlight was the best. What do you guys think? I think it diffused the product well. It looks like there's no like harsh lines. But I also can't, like the contour, I can't see. So I'm not gonna blame it on my brush. I'm gonna blame it on the product. Um, but I do wanna try some other things so we can see. I'm gonna try some much more pigmented blush now in this Danessa Myricks Bellini Cream Blush. This is why I got this, this brush to diffuse that very strong uh, color there. And then my Tower 28, this contour cream, which is basically a bronzer color, the Sculptino Broad. I want to use this as well. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to apply it with my finger first. This is a very warm, I'm going to call this a bronzer. It's, it's a contour cream, but 
and I'm gonna put it on my forehead as well and then we'll see what this brush can do I will say it, it has shed a little bit but that's always normal with any brush it's always gonna shed a little bit and a brush is immune from that You always want to be able to like diffuse a cream product without disturbing your foundation or concealer or whatever you have underneath. That looks pretty good. That was pretty seamless blend there. I realize I didn't put concealer on, so I'm going to do that and then try this Bellini Peach Blush. This is my Sicily concealer that's a little too neutral. This is the Fino Series Eclat Concealer. I love the texture. I will love what it does for my eyes. But it's the wrong color. As I feel like that's the case with a lot of Sicily complexion that I've tried. It's the wrong color. Except for maybe like in the actual foundations. But a lot of the, the tinted sun creams, concealers, powders, like there's not enough shades to choose from but this is a lovely lovely concealer I, I really do like it and i like the metal tip applicator with it it's nice cooling feeling not totally necessary to apply that with that but it, it's it's pretty good okay Let's dip into this blush. So this is the Yummy Skin Bellini blush. Looks scary, right? You only need a little bit. It is very pigmented, so you can get a little clown-like. But I am gonna, it's gonna be a warm summer day. I am going out, so I want to bring some warmth to the face. Let's see what this brush can do. Does it blend too well? Did it make it disappear? No, I can still see some of that peach coming through. I did use this for foundation, so I think there might be some sort of foundation kind of coming off the brush and making this blush disappear just a little bit. I'm also feeling very warm. So my face could be just literally eating this product. That is pretty. Yeah, I think you can, you definitely see that. It's just seamless blend. A right blush makes, a, the right brush makes everything easier. I have foundation all over my lips. I am very washed out right now. All right, I'm gonna stay on this cream train. See if I have a cream highlighter. I have a, a few <laughs> highlighters I, I pulled out. Um, I, I definitely think highlighter is one of those products you can definitely get away with blending out with a finger, but it can, depending on the product, it can just look even more seamless if you use a brush to like make sure the lines are not noticeable. So the lines like between your skin and the product or your foundation and the product. So I have, you know, sort of the original Beauty Light one from Charlotte Tilbury and Spotlight. I have the Auric Glow Lust in Morganite which I think can be a little thick feeling for just on top of all your makeup. I'd rather you know, mix it into foundation. I also have the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlight in Peau de Rose. Okay, so because this is more of the cream texture that I've been playing with, these other products, I'm gonna stick with the cream formulas and Throw this on. This is a really pretty highlighter. So I'm gonna just use the brush mostly as a insurance that this blends out seamlessly. There's no one area that have too much highlighter. Sometimes when I use a brush with highlighter to blend out, it it really takes things down a lot. And sometimes I need that with a very strong highlighter. But when it's more subtle, sometimes it takes away too much but that looks very fresh 
and natural, not a super glowy in your face highlight, um, which I can fix by adding more powder on top. So here is all the cream products on. What do we think? I personally think this side looks better than this side, but I did try to use this side. I don't know, maybe it was too late. So I'll have to do another video trying this out with a full face, use a different foundation and see if I like the result better blending out with this type of buffer brush. It's been interesting so far. If, I mean, I like the way the color products look blended out. Definitely worth it. I feel like every Sonia G brush I buy feels worth it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta remember, it's not like an eyeshadow or foundation. You're gonna be using these products over and over and over again every day that you put makeup on. So to me, the like cost per use is actually pretty low. All right, so I am gonna finish the rest of my makeup and then show you what the spray is like. All right, y'all, here is the makeup look. I'm a little detached from my body. Maybe too much blush, maybe too much. I don't know, my cheeks are red right now. I'm hoping that goes down maybe if I cool down a little bit. But here's the final look. I used some cream eyeshadows, some eyeliner, mascara, filled in the brows, did the lips. So here's my full face. I also did some setting powder on top of all the creams because it's gonna be a warm day. Warm things to last. But often when I use powder on top of all the wetness and creams, I want things to not only just, I want this to you know make my makeup last, but I also want the powder to sort of melt into everything else and just sort of become one. And so setting powder is great to set your face, but setting spray sort of makes things combine. That's where the magic happens. So it's not just about longevity, but also just making your powdery makeup become one with the rest of everything else. So this is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. I used my credits with Beautylish to purchase this. I was like, I don't know what to pick up. Browse through the site for a while. You know what? I'm gonna pick this up. I am almost on my setting spray. So here we go. Here's the mist on here. I just wanna show you. You guys can see that it's strong. It sprays a lot and I just sprayed my whole mirror. Um, it is fragrant, very fragrant, but it doesn't smell bad. It's kind of a nice floral. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, but it feels very light. Because it's so light, it makes you want to spray more because honestly, I can't really feel it. Um, but that looks good. A lot of people use a fan after they spray just to get it to dry faster. Um, I do see some little bit of heavy droplets on the forehead. Some people do not like that, but I don't mind. It's, it is what it is. So I will check in later if I can. I'm not going to end up having time to go on the walk, but I'm going to have a very long day of going to a couple parties, birthday parties today, graduation, maybe doing the luau tonight. We shall see. So I have a lot of activities. I need to checking in later that night. Just want to show you how the setting spray works. You can see there's lots of areas where the foundation has worn off. My skin is red little bit patchy so I'm not sure that it does that much in terms of helping with longevity. But that is it for the video. I covered a lot of <laughs> different products um, and just sort of a random assortment, assortment of things I have picked up lately and it's been fun to finally get the time to do a video with you guys. If you have any questions, have any follow-up about these products, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.